So this uh, Sigma Tau Symposium is very timely because it is at uh, this precise stage of the development of the treatment of fertility, both for males and for females, that it is beginning to be realized that there are treatments appropriate for males. Because, of course, 50% of the problem that is infertility for couples does reside with the male partner. And so over the last year there have been several developments in the sort of tests and investigations that can be done to indicate possible causes for male fertility. And whenever such tests are developed, specifically in this case tests for the integrity of the DNA and for chemicals that might be in the seminal fluid that may be affecting the DNA and the quality of the sperm, whenever such tests are developed, then of course it becomes more appropriate not only to investigate the patients to find out why they may be infertile, but also therefore to enact treatments which previously were generally held not to be effective. But I think we now have a real opportunity to investigate and to treat many of these male partners who are having difficulty with their, with their wives to conceive by treating them in many different ways. And one of those ways that we have been investigating, particularly in a study in London, is by the use of antioxidants, antioxidants in proprietary preparations which may reduce levels of these oxidizing chemicals in the seminal fluid and thus might improve sperm quality. We think by improving the DNA quality in the sperm, thus to make a natural conception more likely. One of the extremely difficult things that uh, makes the measurement of the effectiveness of treatments difficult is how does one assess the outcome? Because very often a successful outcome is not just about the measurement of sperm morphology or sperm motility or even the numbers of the sperm. A successful outcome as far as our patients is concerned is about having a successful pregnancy and creating a family. And of course this is something that may not be evident within a year study or even two-year study. One needs vast numbers of patients to prove that a particular treatment is at least as effective as our colleagues in gynecology and reproductive medicine have managed with IVF treatments. So I think this is just the beginning of a revolution in the treatment of males, not only to improve their sperm quality, their sperm numbers, and their sperm morphology, but to be able to reassure them in the future that these treatments may actually result in a higher natural pregnancy rate and with time to be able to show that these treatments improve the outcomes with IVF and the techniques of artificial reproductive technology.